This is the Hammer Untamed World vs. World Roaming build. We're going to go over the traits, the equipment, and the skill combos. So let's get straight into it. The gear that I use is full Berserkers with durability runes. I have a Marauder Hammer, but you should use Berserker. It's just what I had. And the reason for this is because whenever you're making a power build you want to make sure that the vitality is around 20,000 is a pretty safe number and your crit chance wants to be around 80 percent while you have fury so i'm only at 70 percent with fury i'm kind of low but through the traits i've got remorseless which gives me opening strike whenever i gain fury and that gives me 100 percent crit on my next attack which increases the average crit chance so it's generally okay and because it gives me 100% crit chance on some of my attacks, and if I control that well and put those on the heavy hitting abilities, then I want those to hit as hard as possible. So full Berserker is the best there. And since I've got the Vitality trait in Untamed, that gives me enough health to go full Berserker. You go double cleansing on both weapons because the build kind of lacks in Condition Cleanse because you're not going Wilderness Survival. So you've only got Mutate Conditions, which is a one-time cleanse all conditions. And then whenever you unleash myself or my pet, I'll remove conditions. And then just the cleansing sigils. So it's kind of a build that's weak against conditions. Though it is very good against power build because you've got a lot of weakness from the Clarion Bond whenever you swap pet. And whenever you use the Unleashed Pet ability, enveloping haze which gives a poison field and if you use your leap swoop through that that'll give you a weakening leap attack and if you use your hammer five through that that's a blast which would also give area weakness so it's very good against those power builds and then i go for celerity on the hammer because you have a lot of disables on the hammer you've got the while you are not unleashed so while your pet is unleashed your hammer three and your hammer five will CC and those will give you the celerity sigil proc which gives you quickness which allows you to do your bursts a lot faster and then for the traits you've got marksmanship beast mastery untamed in marksmanship you've got clarion bond which is going to give you fury and whenever you gain fury you get those remorseless procs which gives your next attack 25 percent more damage so you want to hit your maul you want to hit your unleashed hammer two hammer five and those will give you a lot of damage with that remorseless proc so how do you get fury you get fury from whenever you swap pets you get fury from disabling and you get fury from using mutate conditions while you are unleashed and you also get fury from landing your hammer five while you're unleashed so how do you disable obviously while well, you um, have the hammer three and the five if those will disable an enemy, then you'll get Fury, and then your next attack will have the opening strike for Remorseless, and your Hilt Bash, the Greatsword 5, will also do that. So you want to be timing these Remorseless procs into your heavy hitting abilities like your Greatsword 2 and your Hammer 2. Those are your main damaging abilities because they're single hitting attacks. So you either do a CC into the burst, or you do like a pet swap into the burst and that will give you a lot of damage because of the 25% modifier and the 100% crit chance. Also, there's moment of clarity. So there's disables and then there's interrupts. Moment of clarity will give you another 25% damage on your next attack after you interrupt an enemy. So that's gonna give you even more burst if you disable an enemy while they were using an ability and that can give you and your pet a lot of damage on the next attack so if for example you land like a big cc and then you use your pet ability that does a lot of damage like your tail swipe that can be like a one shot right there so we'll talk about that in a bit how to do those combos but for now we'll go over the rest of the build beast mastery you've got the commands trait which gives you pretty much permanent regeneration and swiftness just from these two abilities also with Beast Mastery, you have Lesser Quickening Zephyr, which gives you quickness whenever you pet swap. And if you use your heal skill and then pet swap in the middle of the animation, you can get a really long duration on the quickness, and that'll follow through with the Celerity Sigil as well. 
So a lot of times you do want to pet swap and then use your heal skill because that'll give you longer durations on the might and fury and swiftness and all those other boons that you have. So yeah, the quickening Zephyr is really important as well because when you swap pet, the pet is on you. So the pet is ready to do damage in melee with you. So you give out the quickness and then you use your pet's next attack and it can do a lot of burst combo. So that's really important to the, the burst is this trait. And of course, the two-handed training gives you fury whenever you disable an enemy. That's really important. And it reduces the greatsword weapon cooldowns and gives more damage while you're on your greatsword. Then in Untamed, we gain a barrier whenever we use a cantrip. Got three cantrips here. The barrier is actually pretty nice because it's about 2,000 barrier. And it adds up over time because the build kind of lacks the sustain, right? And then you've got the cleansing unleash whenever you unleash or your pet unleashes then you can cleanse conditions and you've got fervent force whenever you disable an enemy you're going to reduce all of your cooldowns by two seconds this isn't just your weapon skill cooldowns it's even your utilities and that means you can get your heal skill a lot more often you can get your stun breaks more often you can use your burst combos more often so it's just better for your aggressiveness and your defensiveness to land these disables. The pets I take are the Smoke Scale for utility and CC, and the River Drake for mostly just burst damage. So how the Untamed works is you have all of the F abilities are available instead of just the F2. So normally you only have the F2, but now you can use all three, and that's really important because you can do a lot of combos for example, the smoke scale, normally you send the smoke scale in, it just goes in and does its attacks normally. So it would do the smoke assault, which is now your F3, into the F1, which is the takedown, which is a stun. Normally it'll just do that automatically and it becomes very predictable. But if you can maintain the timing of it yourself, you can bait out cooldowns and players who normally get used to dodging the smoke scales knockdown right after it does the smoke assault well you can wait a little bit and then hit them after they dodge it and that'll allow you to do a lot of damaging combos so you can get the takedown with your pet and then land your hammer two for example which does more damage to targets that are cc'd so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do there when the pet is unleashed so you can use your f5 ability here right above your health bar and that swaps between you or the pet being unleashed when you are unleashed your hammer skills will change and you will do 15 percent more strike damage which is just power damage when the pet is unleashed you will take 10 percent less damage and your pet will have the unleashed abilities when the pet is unleashed the f1 will port it into the target and there's essentially no animation on that so what you can do with that is you can send your pet in with the f1 and then you can immediately unleash yourself and then do the pet's knockdown to reliably land that so that's another way to land the takedown also you have the f2 is rending vines which will remove two boons from targets that are hit and it's a combo finisher blast this is really good for combining with the smoke scales already F2 skill when you are unleashed, which will give a smoke field. So what you can do is you can use the F2 and then unleash it, then F2 again, and then you can blast that with your hammer and then leap through it with the greatsword. And that's a lot of stealth up time to give you a little bit more disengage potential. Now also the F3 is enveloping haze, which is a combo field poison, and that will also give a projectile blocking field so that's extremely powerful for engaging on enemies who have projectiles because you're a melee build and they usually get the advantage on you when they can start hitting you before you even get to them so really powerful attack and it does a decent amount of damage you can essentially start out with your pet going in doing the f1 f2 f3 to remove some boons and projectile block and then what you can do is you can unleash yourself and send in the F3 and then knock them down. From there, what you can do is go in with your hammer five 
which is the Unleashed Thump, which does a lot of damage, and it will give you Fury. So if I have Opening Strike right now, I can go in and use Unleashed Thump with the Opening Strike. That does a lot of damage, but now I have another Opening Strike because I just got Fury. So you can do two Opening Strikes in a row for a lot of damage. Then you've got access to other kinds of things that you can do. For example, if your pet doesn't land their immediate CC, then you can go in with just the non-unleashed thump, which is a knockdown. And then you can combine that with unnatural traversal, which is a no animation port to the target. So I can do this and then I can immediately unleash myself, swap, and use the two skills on both my hammer and my greatsword, which will do a lot of damage to the target. And I can also swap my pet after that as well. So there's another layer to those combos because after you port to the target, right, you're going to be away from your pet. But if you swap pets, swapping pets puts the pet where you are. So if I port to the target and then I swap, essentially the pet has also ported to the target as well. So you can do insane combos with that. Now that leads us to the final combo, which you want to do with Hilt Bash. So essentially this is, you want to do this combo when the enemy is running away because Hilt Bash requires you to hit them from behind to stun them. Otherwise it'll just daze them. So usually I save this for when they're running away. So the entire combo is you usually want to be in smoke scale and then you're going to swap to your river drake. And then what you'll do is you'll precast the Hilt Bash into unnatural traversal, immediately pet swap, and then use your maul. Maul, by the way, gives your pet 25% extra damage on its next attack. And then you'll use your tail swipe on your, um, your river drake. So it'll look like this. And you can see, I just did 8,000 with the tail swipe there and a 7,000 with the maul. So that's pretty much your one shot there. Here's a bit of a situation where I engage on two enemies. I land my double maul combo with Hilt Bash into my Relentless Whirl. I've got the Enveloping Haze up as well, which prevents a lot of counter pressure. I land my Hammer 5 into the Hammer 2, but I get stunned and a banner. So I have to back off, but I have the warrior in my sights and I try to get the kill on them with the Hammer 4 into the Hammer 2. They dodge. I don't crit my maul, but I do see that they're really low, so I go in for the swoop. My pet knocks them down, and I follow up with the Hilt Bash from behind to get a second maul. And they're down, but I'm taking way too much pressure from this Reaper. I put out my Smoke Field from the pet, and I swoop backwards into it to get a Stealth Stomp. But I get stunned by the Reaper, and I actually use the Tail Swipe there from my pet so that they get weakness, and that means I won't take that much counter pressure from them. And I put the pet back on the body, and I start cleaving with it, and then I do the burst combo here, 10,000 maul, because I've got the proc there, but the mesmer respawns, and I have to be careful because they're coming for me instead of the two down bodies. They want to get three kills here. So I am playing very safely. I could probably use my mutate conditions here just to get barrier, but the warrior banners, are they vengeance, and they're probably able to get the stomp on me, but they die due to timing out there. And I have to kite, I use the double hammer five with the unleash, and I regain some health here. Now the reaper's really low, and I wanna make sure that they die, but I also have to be careful because I know that the mesmer is not on their team, and after I kill the reaper yeah they're gonna go they're going for me anyways before the reaper dies but i want the reaper to die as well i want to get all these kills so i go in i use the maul into the unnatural into another hilt bash and then i savage slash into the hammer too and they're taken out even though they were pretty beefy now i try to just finish them off because i know that this uh mesmer is probably going to focus me so i get them low enough that they can't self-res keep my pet on them and then i disengage Here's another situation where I am playing with a, looks like a renegade, and we get a down here. We're gonna cleave with our pet using all the F abilities to prevent any kind of like projectile cleave counter pressure, but we're gonna go in for this next kill on the hollow, but yeah, they're a little bit too close to that dangerous positioning, so we're gonna back off 
and secure this kill here. I see that there's a ranger on me, so I'm going to kite a little bit, see if my pet's cooldowns are up. They're not, but as soon as it is, I'm going to be able to use the enveloping haze to prevent this projectile pressure on me. Now we get that kill secured, but my ally is really deep in there, so I'm going to try to go in and help them. Try to get them out, because I'm going to need to fight with my allies to survive. They actually get one down, so... I'm going to go in for maybe the hammer five burst here and I see, yeah, there's not a good target right now. I don't want to go in and die. So I see, yeah, maybe the Herald here or the uh, Renegade is good and we get the down and I'm going to go for the stomp with stability and we get that. But now I'm really pressured. I use my pet swap to get some quickness and super speed to get out of danger and we're going to be chased down now by a lot of uh jade quarry members here but i turn around and do another burst on them because if they're just running straight at me the chances that they're gonna dodge my burst is less likely so we get another down because they weren't expecting me to go back in and they do they're almost getting the res but we have a lot of cleave here with the pet is gonna do some cleave here as well as the renegade but yeah they've got a mesmer on me now and the counter pressure and CC is starting to overwhelm me and I'm pretty much out of out of cooldowns. So I go down. I'm looking for the rally here off of this Mesmer. We get it and I do a double hammer five to get out of danger and swap pet so I can get the quick swoop out of there. Now my ally is really close to dying. I'm going to give them a little bit of swiftness and regen here, but they're going to pretty much already have that. And now we are pretty much out of danger. Here's a 1v1 against a Vindicator, which is a very high sustain class, and I am a burst class, so the only way for me to win is to pressure them hard enough that they can't get their sustain off. So I need to land my CC combos very well and kill them before they're able to get off a lot of their healing and I run out of cooldowns. So we're going for a very aggressive strategy, in other words. My Hammer 5 is going to be used here. I get the knockdown and I get a 6k hammer too, but they're going to evade and get a lot of protection whenever they evade because of the trait there. I get stunned, but I mutate those conditions and I need to keep landing damage constantly or, you know, they're going to resustain harder than me. So I send my pet in soon. I ran out of my blocks counterattack there. The pet's going to go for the knockdown now. They get it, and I have a lot of weakness on me, so that's kind of unfortunate that I can't really do any damage. So I've got a lot of uh, vulnerability on me too, and I get the knockdown and a 7k hammer 2 into my Relentless Whirl, which gives me a little bit of a uh, lifesteal to keep sustaining and getting this kill, but I use my burst too early there, and it was into their block. So you can see there's mistakes being made here in my burst, if I were cleaner on my burst and landed my cooldowns a little bit more effectively, I'd probably be able to get the kill, but because I messed up my combo, they're able to survive longer and I don't get the kill. But if you like this content, then like the video, subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.